Hello everybody and welcome back to another day at Blue Jay Acres where we are sharing with you every day what we are eating and how we are doing a large family on a very tight budget of $500 a month. So let me just go on and jump into it. Here is breakfast. All right, breakfast today. Luke and Theo are on a pancake kick. So I'm making pancakes again today. Um, I'm not gonna share that recipe with you because I just shared it with you the other day, but it will be linked down below if you guys want it. It is the best from scratch pancakes, I promise. So good. All right, I am just gonna, well, I can spread them all out, can I? I'm gonna put this in the oven and let this bake, and then I'm gonna make the pancakes real quick. With the pancakes, I'm gonna make a fruit smoothie. Theo has been requesting that. We are definitely missing all of our fresh produce. <laughs> Very much so. I uh, cannot wait until the first and go get some, but we are gonna have some uh, smoothie. So I have two more of the frozen orange juice left after I use this one. Okay, for the smoothie, I'm gonna keep it very simple. I have this triple berry frozen mix that I already have. We have not even opened yet. It's been in there a while because it's very frozen. Okay, I'm just going to take a chunk of that. Put it in here. I've lost a few blueberries along the way. I'm going to add some of this coconut milk that I had to open. That'll help give it a little bit of creaminess. And then some of the orange juice that I just made. Now let's stir that up. So here it is then, here's breakfast. We're having, oh, I forgot to grab the syrup. So we're having syrup with it as well. And the drinks, Luke does not drink this. He's got his V8 Fusion and he already ate some pancakes. So there we go. Okay, so um, I'm gonna answer one of the comments down below um, before we move into lunch. And that was a, how much would you really spend if you didn't have stuff? in your fridges and your freezers and your pantries, what would you really be spending? So I'm gonna tell you $500 a month <laughs> because most of what you guys have seen me use, aside from baking type items, flour, sugar, which I told you I stocked some of that up at the beginning of this month. I just unfortunately did not have that haul to show you along with protein powder and juice for my son. That was my main stock up this month. Um, but. I shared, we did $400 for November, $400 for December. I shared that with you guys. So the question about meats, unless it was from the pig that we bought in August, um, that I've cooked over this last month, everything has been that I bought during that time for the most part. And you can go back and watch all those shopping hauls. I found great deals on meat for a few months, which was wonderful. And I'm actually really missing going and getting all those deals now. But I did use that and I did it on 400. So could I have taken that extra $200 if I was doing 500 those months and buy the other stuff like the candy evaporated milk and the uh, sugar and flour and the other things that I'm using? Most definitely. Because you can buy a big bag of flour for $10 or for, I'm sorry, $3.80 something at Walmart, a 10 pound bag. You can buy a great big 20 pound bag of rice for 10 bucks at Meyer, and I think it might be closer to 11 now, used to be 10 at Walmart. You can buy oats, which I actually did buy oats during um, the shopping haul, I think in December, you guys saw me buy oats. Um, so yes, all of that could be bought. You guys watched me buy all the butter that I'm using, you watched that be bought um, when it was a real good deal and I got it two for five at Aldi. Um, so, how am I able to do that? By stocking up as we go. So by stocking up 
every week when you see things on sale that's how you can build a pantry and I do advise everybody to build up your pantry because I think that especially now it's just something you should do and it's something that we learned long ago to do um, and since Luke has been born in the last 10 years my husband has been laid off twice during that time we lived on unemployment and what we could afford as far as little things I tried to go back to work well I talked to him about it and even to help out during that time and he did not want me to because we had a special needs child and it was a lot of work and I was completely sleepless <laughs> so he needed sleep for interviews so we made it happen we made it work both times and the last time he was laid off we were six months without employment um, every time it has been by the grace of God and, and his helping hand that we actually went through that layoff because something better always awaited on the other side so I'm a huge person of um, in believing in that and having faith that everything's gonna work out um, but anyway so stocking a pantry is huge because we need to be able to use that and by buying stuff on sale you can easily stock up and like I said because we've been through layoffs <laughs> this is not our first time to go through this in fact those of you that have been with me for a really long time know that on my other channel we had a time where we had to go tight budget again I think we were doing like $800 a month at the time all 10 were home and um, we didn't go as tight as we are now but we had some hospital bills to pay we had therapy to pay um, we weren't in credit card debt at the time, but that kind of happened after moving here to the farm. And that is why we are so strict, so tight right now, because we are trying to get out of that debt. But it is very doable. And then somebody had commented, but because that would be hard with now, the prices now. So you're going to watch me do it. <laughs> in a year's time, I'm going to go through a majority of what's down in our basement as I'm rotating it out and replenishing. You guys saw me use the end of a lot of stuff. A lot of that I'm going to replenish and with my $500 also growing our own stuff is huge and you know I think everybody if you have the ability I've told my son he's got a patio on his apartment grow something put something out there grow some tomatoes grow something if you have to grow it in your house <laughs> grow something because every little bit helps and seeds are a fraction of the cost of what the produce actually costs so um, we do grow and we're going to continue to grow and that will cut a lot down on the produce that we have to buy and I'm going to do more and more canning which is something that I've definitely taken away from this month I'm not going to the store at all um, except for the very beginning of the month and that is we need to can and can and can and can because we do not enjoy the canned food from the grocery and that's why you see a basement with quite a bit of canned food because don't enjoy it to go grab a can of green beans is not at all the same as fresh or frozen and we just don't enjoy it we'll eat it if we have to but you don't see me make it much <laughs> we don't enjoy it but home canned I think we would enjoy that more so I'm going to run out of freezer room at some point and I will have to do the canning so I will freeze as much as I can but I'm gonna can a lot more fruit is a huge one um, definitely having canned fruit and buying that and stocking up when it's on sale is going to be a huge help going forward and I will definitely be doing that making our own jams and jellies I'm going to try and make everything that I can myself because one we know what's in it <laughs> and we don't have to stress about what you know is in it from other companies that maybe they're not saying is in it or that they are saying is in it and it's still not good for human consumption so that is our plan <laughs> and uh, I hope that answers your question a little bit about people might really think that you're doing it on 500 well I am and um, so hopefully that is what they think <laughs> all right now lunch all right so lunch today we are having the rest of the brownies and the rest of the shells that we made last night so that's it that's lunch super easy okay so now it is time to start dinner I had to open a new bag of rice so I want to show you guys what I was talking about when I was saying a 20 pound bag of rice this is how big I mean it is a big bag of rice this one was actually from Walmart and it was like nine dollars and something I don't know uh, but I got this I don't know probably about 
five, four or five months ago. But the point being, again, that's a super easy way to stock up on a lot of rice, especially if you're a smaller family, because you wouldn't go through it near as fast as we are. But tonight, we're using rice, and we are making firecracker chicken. All right, we're gonna start with the chicken. I have four chicken breasts here, um, and then I put three in the fridge. These are from those big packs of chicken that we got. Um, I think they were under $10, $9 and something. And I am just gonna cut them into bite-size-ish pieces. Nick is excitable. He just got done with school. So that's all excitement. We're working on a Russian unit study. So he's very excited about that. I don't know why he picked Russian to focus on. Maybe just with all the talk in the news or I don't know. But that's what he picked. This is still a little bit frozen, but I find that that is good when you're trying to get it all cut. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it in a baggie because we're gonna toss this with some cornstarch. here. I'm going to put that on high and heat up some a good amount of olive oil on here. That'll be good. And then I also have a baking dish. And also, I'm going to set my oven at 350. So, I'm going to toss in a little bit of cornstarch. I'm just kind of doing one chicken breast at a time because I'll need the space in the pan. And I'm just going to kind of brown it so it gets a little bit of like a bedding, or uh, bedding, a <laughs> breading on it. And I'll have it be crispy. And then we're going to finish cooking it in the oven. Then while that's going, I'm gonna go on and cut my next chicken breast up. And then I'm just gonna move them over to the dish. They're getting brown on both sides. So now this is nice and browned and so I'm gonna put this in the oven until it's done cooking and we'll make the sauce while that's baked. Okay so now we're gonna make the firecracker sauce so I'm gonna turn this on. I'm gonna add hot sauce. This is just uh, kind of like Aldi's brand of Frank's hot sauce. A little vinegar, 
a little soy sauce. And then minced garlic. Now this, I actually have two more jars downstairs. I know I used the last of one of them yesterday. I might have three jars. But I am trying to go through this because we planted a ton of garlic uh, in the fall. But we won't get it until, it won't come up until uh, the end of the summer. And then to that, you add brown sugar as well. And quite a bit. I'm just going to pour the rest. Then I'm just going to stir this all together. And you'll just have to see if it's too hot for your family, what your family likes. I like it spicy. Charles does not. Ronnie doesn't. Kate does. So I have to tone it down some for them. But you want to just give it a little taste, see if there's anything else that you need to add to your sauce. All right, and that's perfect. If you can see, it kind of coats the spoon. You guys can see that. It's just going to kind of coat the chicken some. So next what I'm going to do is pull this out of the oven I'm going to put it back in for a few more minutes but I want to toss with all of this sauce Now I'm going to put this back in the oven. All right, so here it is. There's rice underneath and broccoli. It's our last bag, I do believe. There might be one more. Uh, steamed broccoli, frozen broccoli. Added some sesame seeds and then some of our frozen green onions to the top because they defrost really fast. And that is dinner. One of our favorites. It's so good. I'll get Charles down here to taste test, but I gotta make his without broccoli. So that then is Charles's. And he came down right away and what'd you say? I said, don't put no broccoli on mine. <laughs> Alright. It's hot though. Why do you always get too hot? Because that's when dinner's done. I, think. I know that's because I'm the taste tester. Well, you've had this a ton. I know. <laughs> like another thing I, looks really good. I've made for years. Another recipe. So, aside from the chicken, I like the juice, kind of the, the sauce, sauce mixed in with the rice, just on its own, and it just tastes really also, good. Also, I put some sauce on the rice before I put the chicken on top. Yeah. That's a big one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you take a big bite of chicken. Mm. Well, thumbs up. <laughs> all right, I'll let him fix his mouth. All right, there you have it. We are all hungry. I'm going to wrap it up. I'm going to get this mm. up for you guys. And I will see you tomorrow for another What We're Eating. That was really good. God, it was hot. <laughs> All right. Thank you guys so much for watching. Bye, everybody. Have a great day or night, wherever you are.